working on where you're solving two-step equations. Okay, you've done two-step equations involving multiplication. You've done two-step equations involving division. You're doing two-step equations here. The last section is two-step equations involving brackets. We're going to look at a couple things here. Um, there is something for you to do here after if you have not already done this, the explore the math, but I'm going to look at the examples with you here. Okay, the idea that you're looking at in this section is equations that look like this that involve brackets. You're not doing the crazy grade 9 ones where there's a whole bunch of brackets like this. This would be the crazy grade 9 one maybe uh, with lots of brackets. Okay, that's that's what you do later. You're limited to in grade in grade uh, 8 to just do something like this that has one set of brackets in it, okay? And only x in one place. Grade 8, we don't start looking at x in more than one place. So let's get rid of that whole thing. Um, I think a concrete model helps with this. I know some of you are doing the using the blocks and balloons, and you could do this with blocks and balloons. Um, I'm going to use algebra tiles for this because I think it's a little easier to work with, but you can still do the same thing. This is not going to be a problem as long as you understand what that means when you have something in front of brackets. You know we are getting used to this year having writing multiplication. You know when you did that integer sheet, it didn't say something like 3 times 4. It said 3 and a 4 in brackets or even both of them in brackets. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? If you want to do, we're, we're not using the time sign. We're just writing something next to each other. What do you think this means here? That set of symbols all collected together. What does that mean? A three right next to these brackets here. Let me make those brackets bigger. What do you think that means? It does. This means this is like a multiplication in there. Okay. So think about what that means. And if if I was to uh, model this thing, and I'm going to flip over to this for a second. Okay, 3 bracket x plus 2 equals 4. So I'm going to write that up here so that we can see what it... So the equation we're working with here is 3 x plus 2 equals 4, right? Now, if I'm doing this really well, I should uh, have it all nicely lined up at the equal sign. So I'm going to move this so that it's right there, right? The, e the equal sign is the line here, right? I guess we don't need this line. Let's get rid of that. Um... If you're going to model this, uh, when you're using algebra tiles, if you're using algebra tiles, an X tile, they just use a green one like this. So the stuff that's inside the brackets, there's one of those, and then there's two of these things. These are unit tiles, if you're using algebra tiles. That's how you model X plus 2. But we don't have uh, X plus 2. We have three times that much, right? You have three times that much? And then what do we have on the other side? Just a 4. Positive 4 you represent with 4 things like that. Okay, if you're using algebra tiles. You should get used to them because in grade 9 and 10 you're going to use them more. We didn't, we don't use them that much in grade 8. But you do use them more in grade 9 and 10, so it doesn't hurt if we start to look at them now. So that's how you could model 3 bracket x plus 2. But we don't want to model it with this 3 times as much here. If I have 3 times that much, what does that mean? When you're grade 1 or 2 and you learn about multiplying, what does 3 times something mean? 3 times 5, when you first learn about multiplying, 3 times 5 means you have 3 groups of 5. So we, if we have 3 groups of this, if I, uh, if I get rid of those brackets, how can I show this here? If I'm doing uh, 3 groups of that, I can put one of these here, and I need uh, 2 more of these to go with it, right? And then what's the other thing I need here? I could have just copied and pasted, I guess. And we have those. That's what you have, right? Three groups of x plus 2, right? Each of these is x plus 2. That's x plus 2. That's x plus 2. And that's x plus 2. What's the simpler way to write that? Whoops. What's the simpler way to write that? Instead of writing it as 3 times x plus 2, what's the simpler way I could write that without brackets? Is there a way I can express what this is without brackets? What could I say? If I just showed you this and said the green tile represents x and the red thing represents four or represents one, how would you write this? You'd, you probably wouldn't write it like this, right? 
Just like if I asked you to just represent this, you wouldn't call it three times two. You'd call it how much? The red, the, the red things. You just call them six, right? And if the if each of those represents x, how do you represent? How do you write that? Three x. You can write it like this without brackets, or you can write it like this with brackets. If you have an equation that is written as three bracket x plus two, it's the same as three x plus six without brackets. That's going to be what you're going to do because then as soon as you do that, then you can solve it. Now it's just like what we did before. Okay. So the change you're making here is saying if I have three times as much as x plus two, I can write it as that much. Okay. I can write it as three x plus six. So that's one of the methods that you have here. Okay, one of the methods that you have here. Now, I actually realize now that I made it so that this doesn't uh, turn out to be a, a whole number for an answer here. Okay, I actually probably should have put a number like like 9 here instead. That's my mistake because in grade 8, the answers are supposed to come out to integers and I put a wrong number there. If that was if that was 3x three, um, three plus 2 is 9, your two choices are to think of it as... as 3x plus 6 equals 9, right? That's This is called, you know, getting rid of the brackets is called distributing. This is called distributing this 3, multiplying it the 3 times the x and 3 times the 2. Let's go back to that picture for a second. Before I showed you this, that this was 3x, and before we had any of this stuff here, if you have three times as much as this, if you have three times as much as that stuff, right? Three times as much as this, it's like three times as many as these and three times as many as those. That's called distributing. This three is distributed over both kinds of pieces here, right? If you say you have three times as much as all of this in the brackets, it's three times each one of the types of pieces. So when you are solving your equation, that's how you can write it. Probably this is the way most, you know, grade 9, 10, 11, 12, if they had brackets, they would just say, I know what to do here. It's 3 times that and 3 times that. So I have 3x plus 6 equals 9. 3x plus 6 equals 9. And then you can solve it the way you would do before. What, what What's the first step you would do after that? If you have 3x plus 6 is 9... What was the first thing you'd do? Get rid of that, right? You have 3x equals 3. That would be, you know, it's a, it's really, I guess, sort of a three-step equation now because we had to do this. That was a step. This is a step, and we still have to do one more step. But you'll see in a second why it's still called a two-step equation. What can we do now to get it to have x by itself? Anybody who's paying attention? Yes? Divide by? Exactly. And you just end up with x equals 1. This is this is called distributing first. The doing this is distributing the 3. This is actually, I, I meant the first example we would just draw pictures, but now I've done it this way. Using the distributive property is doing that. Okay. The other way you're going to do it is with inverse operations. So I'm going to go back here and write this. To the one I was just doing. So this is this was distributive property. I'm going to write that over here. I'm going to say distribute first. Okay. Or you could do this. Or or you could divide it first. Okay. Or you can divide the thing first. Oops. If you divide this first and uh, Dividing first, if you go back to the concrete model here, okay, let's uh, let's think about this, and I'm going to make it into 9 the way it's supposed to be. Um, let's get rid of all the lines here first. Okay, this is actually, let's, let's make this into 9 because I meant to have it as a 9, but if we have, uh, how many do we need here? We need 8 more, and then we need one more here. 
if you have uh, if you have all of these things, if you have three x's, three groups of x plus two, and that equals nine. Okay, one thing you can do is what we just did, which is lump it all together. You can write your first step can be to write three x plus six equals nine. Right, that could be your first step, or your first step could be to divide first and say if I have if I have three groups of x plus two, right? If I have three groups of x plus two, if I have three of these things, if three of those is nine, how much does one of those have to be? If three of those is nine, three of those yellow things is nine, right? One of those yellow things, here's one of those yellow things. If I have three of the yellow things, and that's equal to nine, how much is one of those yellow things? Three. Three, it has to be three, right? So you can divide first. Basically, this is kind of like grouping it here. And saying if each of them is, uh, if all of them together are nine, one of them is three. All right? So you can first divide. Okay? If you want to, you can divide first. So instead of, instead of doing this first, you can just say, why don't I just divide by three first? Because it's times by three. So you can divide by three first. So if you're starting with, I'm going to have to write this over here. If you're starting with three x plus two equals nine, your very first step could be to do this. What do I get if I divide? If I divide this side by 3, what am I left with? What am I left with on the left side? Just x plus 2, right? If you have 3 times as much as that, and you divide by 3, it, just, it, it gets rid of the 3. This cancels out. And then I just have x plus 2. Now, a question could be, why don't I need the brackets on it anymore? Why don't I need the brackets on it anymore? What do you think? You got rid of the three. You don't need the brackets in front. You just need that. What do I have on this side? Just, just a three, right? What's my next step after that if I've divided it here? X plus two is three. What's my next step? Minus two. Minus two. And you just get X equals one. You get the same answer both ways, but it's important for you to realize that you can divide first or you can distribute first. You can decide what you think is better, but you should you should be able to do both of those ways. This is only two steps to your answer. This is sort of like three steps because you had to get rid of the brackets first. Sometimes for grade nine, when there's more than one set of brackets, you're going to have to know how to do this. But sometimes for grade 8 equations where there's only one set of brackets, you can do this. So make sure you understand both. Okay? If you haven't copied that down, you should copy that down. I know I said use a concrete model, but we looked at a concrete model, but we wrote this down. You have about five minutes right now. Make sure you've copied that down because next time, guess what's going to happen? You're going to say, I have no clue how to do these things. And you're going to need something to go back on. I know you have the textbook, but it might be better just to have a nice example all written out there. Won't take you that long to copy out. I would put both models down, both both methods. Distribute first, divide first. Okay, I'll leave that up there right now. And uh,